As we move more and more towards UHD recording, 4K recording, higher resolutions, uh, we need more and more efficient codecs to be able to keep the data rates down. The problem with that is that in turn, you need more and more powerful machines to be able to decode them and be, allow you to do any decent sort of editing. If you go into Premiere with a, uh, f with a, a UHD 60 frames per second clip, scrubbing across the timeline is a really, really painful procedure unless you, of course, have some sort of, I don't know, some sort of Chinese supercomputer sat in your living room or, um, you know, somewhere in the cellar or something. So anyway, uh, transcoding is therefore quite important now. And it's never quite clear what codecs are good to use for transcoding. So I just wanted to show you quickly here. Um, I've just been transcoding a couple of uh, couple of clips. I was just uh, trying out some uh, color matrix settings. So I was using some stuff uh, which has got a lot of definite and very clear vibrant colors in. And I've transcoded them all from their native format, which is a uh, UHD, so um, 3840 by 2160 at uh, 59.94 frames per second into an MXF format, MXF wrapper. But what I prefer to use in, in a Windows environment is the DNX HD and uh, the DNX HR codec. So they're from AVID, A-V-I-D. Is it AVID? I think it is. Uh, a lot of people talk about ProRes, but ProRes is just no good if you're in Windows because there's so much that isn't supported. They haven't, they've discontinued their support for QuickTime. Um, so continued support for ProRes is, well, it will still work, let's be honest. It's going to still work in the future, but it's not supported anymore. So you kind of think, well, that's not very good. You know, it's not the best one, not the best one to use. And and what I've found is that this codec, this this DNX HD and DNX HR, which are a, a big part of the um, Atomos recorders, for example, you can either use ProRes or if you get a uh, four-digit code, you can use the DNX HD. So. In Adobe Media Encoder, AME, if that's what you're using, you can drop your clips into here and you can sort of select multiple clips as I've done here. But if you do that, don't forget to select this bottom bit as well. So if we just sort of click on this gap here and then just go right to the top because they sort of, they always cascade down like this. So select them all like this. And that means you can make multiple changes all at once. And the great thing is if we look at the format. In fact, all these have been done, so that's not going to really work. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear the queue here and I'm going to just drag over these clips and drop them all in the queue as if I hadn't done them already, which I have. But, you know, they're pretty, they're pretty big, big clips, these. These are actually coming off an SD card, so uh, not, not incredibly fast, I must admit. Uh, right, so if we select that and then select that, we can then go to the drop down and it actually goes off my capture window. Uh, so it's not, not really ideal. Uh, in fact, it's not ideal at all because I can't go to the one I want to show you. Can I bring it up to the, within the screen? Yes, I can. Great. So what you'll see here is as we go down, you've got your DNX HDs, but the Ultra HD equivalent is DNX HR. And uh, that's used for UHD, it's used for 4K DCI, it's used for um, uh, uh, 2K as well. And the HQX for variant is the kind of highest quality. It's 10-bit, I think. So it's I think it's 10-bit 422. I don't think it's 444. I'll check that in a second. And you've got a very specific, you've got absolutely tons and tons of options here within Windows for every single... Uh, variety of footage that you're going to ever uh, going to ever have, so that's why I love it because you, you know you can you're always going to find something that works with your footage. So in this case, I've selected DNX HR HQX UHD 59.94, and I've just changed them all to that. And then I'm outputting to I want to output to the same folder for all of them, so they're all set to the uh, SD card at the moment. But with them all selected, I can click on here and go to my uh, transcode. Uh, folder but I'm actually just going to put them in there because um, 
because I have already done them, so I don't, I'm not actually going to start start these. And then you just hit play and it'll sit. It takes a bit of time, but it'll just run through them all. So the actual output, and I'll show you that now, the output is still problematic because it's massive. You know, the whole point of these files, let me just quickly show you the original files on the SD card. So the original files are here. These are kind of, you know, they're not too, they're not too bad. They're not incredibly long. Um, if I go to media info and bring up the information about the files and just uh, zoom in on that. So you can see it clearly. Yeah, you can see the bit right here, 150 megabits per second resolution and frame rate. And yeah, it's pretty, pretty high bit rate, but it's MP4, uh, MP4 level 5.2 high profile. So not too bad, but of course, when you start moving to these transcoded clips, it gets massive. So where are they? They're there. Um, da, 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 da. Which are the ones we've just done? 14th. Is it 14th of July today? It is, isn't it? Yes. So yeah, you can see here that we've got pretty big files. And 3840 and one. 0.75 gigabits per second, these clips. So the bit rate is huge. Yeah, 422, 10-bit, 1.75 gigabits per second, which if you do a division on this, I'm kind of drifting off, off the point of this, but I'll, I'll still put this up because, you know, you might want to listen to me waffling on. Where's my calculator gone? Oh, come on. Why can I never find anything on Windows 10? So, let's do... Ah, uh, no. Nice, 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 nice. So let's do a basic calculation. 1754 divided by 8 equals 219 megabytes per second. Now, you know, that's a, do that's a doable rate, but... That's actually still quite a lot for even a hard drive to start pushing out at a regular rate, you know, without dropping any frames. So just purely transferring the data, regardless of actually doing any decoding or any kind of like bringing up the image on the screen or anything like that, just the just that side of it is already pretty intensive on your machine. So while, yes, you've moved away from the CPU intensive MP4 uh, codec or MP um, or H... H um, 265 or uh, whatever codec you're using, you've moved away from that sort of low, ba low, low data rate, high CPU. You've now gone to low CPU, but massive data rates. So it's all going a bit insane. You know, we're having these really nice formats to be able to use, and we can shoot really great formats, but the systems that you've got to have behind them are so, so intense. So what I'm going to do, you know, I, I would recommend that you do this, by the way. That's the whole point of the video, is just sort of saying, this is a great codec to use for this type of thing. It doesn't have to be ProRes. Don't worry about ProRes. This is as good as ProRes. So don't get into this sort of, everybody says to use ProRes. Oh my God, it's an Apple thing. Um, bollocks, you don't need to use ProRes. This is a great codec. It looks great, and it works really well in a Windows environment. And you can bring it into DaVinci Resolve, and it will do the job really well and that's what I'm going to do now so I'm going to close this down and I'm going to just quickly bring it into Resolve and just see how well it does actually perform even while I'm doing this uh, screen capture I'm interested to know myself now I'm kind of just winging this now uh, so let's open up Resolve here and I'm going to have to set my project settings to be the right size because they're not at the moment um, 3840, 2160, and it's 59.94 frames per second. And here. So where did I put it? I put it on my D drive, didn't I? And let's go into transcoded. Transcoded. There you are. And um, there's a whole load of rubbish in here. So there we have the clips from today. Can I make those a bit smaller? Yeah. 
great. I'm sure there's a much nicer way of doing this. Uh, but I'm just going to drop those into the media pool. And, and let's just bring in one of these just to see. There's actually no movement in this, so this won't be an ideal one. But, you know, we, mm, yeah, it's not too bad, is it? Let's try, let's try something if the weather is actually some movement. I don't think there really is in, in much of these. That wasn't the point of, of what I was doing. It was more about um, uh, just colours. Yeah, so you can see here I'm scrubbing through and it's pretty... It's reasonably responsive. It is much, much more responsive than it would have been if I was on... Uh, what am I talking about? Yeah, if I, if this was MP4, it would just be silly. But look, yeah, that's look at that. That's pretty good considering the size of the data. So you can get some good performance out of that. There's not this. This is Rec 709 footage. I did. I this is intentionally being color matrixed, so I don't have to do anything to it for, out of camera. I've set the gamma, and then you know it's supposed to be about about right. It's probably a little bit on the um, on the bright side, but. Uh, it recovers pretty well, doesn't it? That, oh, that's good. Uh, but, yeah, pretty nice, actually. Uh, and I think you could continue and grade. Uh, I wouldn't, if you start using um, open effects, if you start using other effects outside of, you know, like Magic Bullet, then it'll really start to probably suffer. Let me, let's just stick some kind of random look on this. Let's just do some silly some silly look like that. And let's see what, what rate it'll actually play at. Oh wow. <laughs> wow, you can see here. I'm gonna zoom into that. You can see this is the frame rate <laughs> that it's managing to achieve. But it is quite consistent, at least. So it's doing managing to do a whole a massive four frames per second. That's four frames out of the 60 frames per second that it has. So let's disable that look. In fact, I'll just reset this node grade entirely and play that. Yeah, so it's managing to read off about 30 to 40 frames per second. But I am capturing at the same time. I've got uh, various pro audio processors going and stuff. So... That's not too bad. I'm happy with that. Anyway, yeah, so this video is not really about anything in particular, uh, but I just wanted to highlight a couple of things. One, D, uh, DNX HD and DNX HR uh, and HQX are really great. It's a really great codec to use um, for transcoding and using footage that you just find you are so having so much trouble with now because you're shooting 4K and you just are having real struggling, really struggling with your machine to start doing some any decent editing. You need to transcode it. That's a great codec to use. And um, yeah, you do, you know, you you do end up with really massive files. So make sure you've got the disk space for it. But uh, yeah, it works pretty well. So if this is of any use to you, then great. If not, then well, just give it a thumbs down or whinge in the comments like a lot of people do on YouTube. Something like that. I don't know. It's up to you. <laughs> I will uh, catch you soon. Bye-bye for now.